Hello, Cryptonauts. Welcome to episode 530 of Cryptocurrency Chat Podcast, July 5th, 2023. I am here with my co-host, Jake Chabrilli, ready to give you some crypto news. And with that said, let's get on to some Black Rock. All right, Jake, what you got on some Black Rock? So it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we've been talking about this news for quite some time with, the, with Black Rock trying to get their first ETF out a spot ETF and there's other ETFs that have been you know enabled but you know BlackRock is known well <laughs> known for many things but primarily known as being the at least in the US the largest um I think they have like nine trillion dollars under management. Mm-hmm. It's a ridiculous yeah, amount of money. Trillion, man. That's a lot. It's, it's insane. Lot. It's absolutely insane. Um you know that's that's more than the the um uh, uh, GDP of some f- uh, most countries, not some countries, most countries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a shit ton of money. Um, can we say shit this early in the show? I guess we're, I already did it, so so be it. Anyways, the point I'm trying to say is that um, BlackRock has a lot of money, and so they've also done a lot of things in the past where they've petitioned the U.S. government, you know, the SEC, the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, for other ETFs, and uh, to date, they've done what 577 total requests, and only mm-hmm. one out of all of those has been denied. And so, when they went in, was it a week ago, week and a half ago, uh, at the end of June, when they decided, hey, we're going to do our you know spot ETF for Bitcoin, um, everybody else started jumping on board because they're like, hey, you know, BlackRock is the king; they're okay, they're going to yeah. get approved. So. Did they? But they didn't, right? I think the SEC actually Negative. gave them some uh, feedback on what they could do to change their request. But they didn't say explicitly no. They just said, hey, here's an advisory. You should try to change this, change that, and then resubmit. But the thing that's so funny, and this is the thing that really comes down to what we've been talking about for so ridiculously long, is that the SEC is basing all of this you know, do what we say and not as we do kind of BS and suing everybody on the fact that they claim that all the rules have already been written down, right? They're like, oh, no, mm-hmm. we, have, we know what the rules are. You're just not following them. And and everyone's, like Coinbase and Binance in particular, um, I know obviously BlackRock's not in trouble with the SEC at the moment, or maybe they are, we just at don't know it. Moment, but yeah. they're they're not doing it wrong, Right. But Coinbase mm-hmm. and Binance are like, well, we don't really know what right and wrong is. We're just doing what we think is supposed to be done, and you're still suing us. You know, how, how many other exchanges have already gone down where uh, Black, uh, not BlackRock, but where Coinbase and, and Binance have not that have been sued out of existence or have closed in fear of being sued and then get sued anyways? I'm thinking of particular Bittrex. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, who who knows what so they're supposed to do? Obviously, BlackRock is doing something right because they've got nine trillion dollars in assets. But it it I think this is the reason that those other three uh, companies like Valkyrie were were trying to get on the, this this um, ETF trend because they're like, well, you know, if BlackRock mm-hmm. can do it, maybe we can do it. Yeah. Um, so uh, I so guess, Valkyrie was successful on a uh, futures a uh, futures yeah. ETF, and I, yep. just like a lot of other companies out there, they were successful on the futures ETF. But that's that's completely different from a spot ETF. Spot ETF is real time uh, uh, yep. Bitcoin purchasing. You're buying yep. Bitcoin at the value that it's at now for the market. Now, futures ETF, you're obviously predicting the future. And what a lot of these companies do when they have that much money, especially something like BlackRock, mm-hmm. what, if they have a futures uh, futures ETF, they can manipulate the futures market right. with the amount of money that they have, and they can make that prediction uh, come to fruition. Yep. And that's the biggest problem that people like us, normies, have. With, with these futures ETF because it's not fair. We can't really play that game. Right. You know, it's only it's only for the big players that have that kind of money. For us, you know, we we want a spot ETF. That's why it's so important to have that. Exactly. And so everybody else wants to get in the spot ETF market and no one's be able to do it. But now BlackRock is playing the game and they're getting down and going like like we're the big dogs. We can we can do this. And of course, the SEC said no. But at the same time. It wasn't like a permanent, no, like, there's no way you're going to get this through. You're just going to have to rewrite your re- request. But that's the thing that's so frustrating is, and it, I'm sure it, it it really, it probably bent some fingers backwards on, on the hands of the people at, at BlackRock going, well, but we always get what we want. <laughs> and then they didn't. And it's because the SEC just isn't willing to bow to what crypto really is. Mm-hmm. So I... It, 
Go ahead. Isn't it weird? You know, uh, the CEO Larry Fink. You know, there, there's this, there's this, um, there's this thing that's going around that uh, <laughs> Jewish people are very wealthy and they always make a lot of money. Right. And Larry Fink is is Jewish. Yep. And this guy is pretty much dominating, like you said, uh, uh, GDPs of, of of nations out there. Mm-hmm. You know, is is it a coincidence? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not get any conspiracy theories. I get a lot of people are not yeah, particularly yeah, fond yeah. of Jewish people because they think that Jewish people run the world. I don't. Yes, he's <laughs> Jewish, but I, I think it's. I, I'm, I don't want to play into the stereotypes. So he's Jewish. He's dominating the world, yeah, man. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to fall into the stereotypes. It's just not. It's not <laughs> cool. Um, but yeah, it's the thing. The thing we really want to get in about this is just the fact that. Um, uh, well, it's not. It's not just the fact that the ETF you know went through and then failed and was told to rewrite it, but the fact that one of these this largest company ever mm. has. And, and I'm, I'm referencing this this main article here where it says that uh, Larry Fink's praises Bitcoin for digitizing gold, as it were. I kind of want to talk about that because it's something we've mentioned in the in the in the show many times in the past, in that. Gold itself was, you know, and still is to some degree with people who believe in fiat, um, or maybe not even fiat, but but in the more traditional markets. And and obviously Larry Fink and, and BlackRock is a traditional market still, even though I'm sure they're very heavily invested in Bitcoin. They just won't tell us, like, you know, Michael Saylor, how much they have, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, the uh, gold... You know, it's like if you take a nugget of gold into a grocery store and try to buy, I mean, maybe a nugget of gold probably probably half the grocery store because it's worth so much. But let's say it was a few flakes of worth enough, like let's say a, f- a few flakes of gold that was a, a, a roughly equivalent to like $400 in groceries, which is probably a lot of groceries for most people, but it, it's a reasonable amount of groceries that might buy for a family. So it's like, I have $400 in gold flakes. I want to give you my gold flakes and get my groceries what do you think that the check the cashier is going to say uh no no, no we don't sir. take gold um, we do not accept gold sorry you... we can accept credit cards and cash dollar bills dollar dollar bills y'all not gold sir you must be mentally insane yeah uh, even though yourself. technically gold is perfectly good currency right yeah i mean if you if you were to want to tra- let's say you brought in um a full gold bar uh, that's worth, I think, I don't remember, was it a quarter? No, not a good, no. Let's, let's say it was um, enough gold uh, medallions, that's what they're called, uh, gold medallions to buy a $50,000 car, which would be not a full gold bar, but a, a few smaller gold bars. And you went to the dealership and said, I have these gold bars. They're mine out and out. I didn't steal them. You know, I have proof of certificate that they're mine. I want to trade these gold bars for that car over there. What do you think the dealership would say? No. No, they would not. They would not agree to it. And there's there's multiple reasons for that. One, even with the certificate, they have to get it vetted to make sure that 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 yeah. certificate is officially real. And if and then maybe they would accept it. Maybe a, a used car dealership might accept it. But in general, it's like gold is just accepted as not being this thing that you can trade anymore. Even though plenty of people buy gold all the time and invest their money in it, you just can't take a gold bar or gold flakes or anything to anybody and trade it for goods and services anymore. Even though we technically still use gold. you know. Here's a really actually good quote in the article from Larry Fink. Mm-hmm. says, I do believe the role of crypto is digitizing gold in right. many ways, said right. Fink. Instead of investing in gold as a hedge against the onerous problem of any one country, let's be clear, Bitcoin is an international asset, he added. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and that's why Bitcoin is so powerful, man. Right. It's, it, it does far more than gold can do. Gold can be melted and used in <laughs> electronics. It can be formed into bars and traded, but it can't be traded for goods and services. Now, maybe in, in another country, but certainly not here in the U.S. Now, obviously, maybe to an individual, like maybe your buddy, you could give him a gold bar, and he would accept that and give you his car. That's probably likely. But even then, 
you know, if you take a bar of gold to the bank, they're like, well, where did you get this from? Did you steal it? And you're like, no, it's my gold. You know, but if it's in bar format, then it can be questionable. So it's like, unless you have certificate proof that it's real and it's actually yours. But see, with Bitcoin, you have that certificate proof. It's on the blockchain. Everyone can see all the transactions and you can trade it to literally anyone at any time. Not all, not everybody accepts Bitcoin, obviously, but, um, and you can see the transactions happen. But see, unlike gold, Bitcoin has way more applicability. And we know this from ordinals, right? Mm -hmm. So right. with ordinals, we have this, this other functionality that we can um, you know, inscribe things to and basically have NFTs or what ordinals are like NFTs, but they're not quite the same in the sense that they're permanent. Um, but there's all this other functionality that we can do with uh, this digital coin interface that's more than just trade of you know, a, a block of metal for some good or service. So I guess what I'm trying to get at with this whole, you know, Larry Fink calling uh, Bitcoin digital gold, digitized gold, is it's a store of value. That is what Bitcoin has been all this time. It has been a store of value. You can dump, as Michael Saylor has demonstrated time again, <laughs> billions of dollars into Bitcoin at roughly $30,000 a piece and hold actual value. You know, his company was what, what's the current was he got a hundred and well, they bought twelve thousand three hundred and thirty three recently and they already had a hundred and thirty thousand so he's he's up to like um hundred and fifty five is a hundred fifty I thought it was hundred and forty two thousand anyways, whatever. It's oh, yeah, right. hundred and forty two thousand three hundred and thirty three Bitcoin worth four and a half mm. billion US dollars. Wow. Um and that's a store of value. Anybody can and in fact, this was, I remember it was, a, what, 2016 or 2015 or something. Somebody bought a house in Tahoe, Tahoe, California, f using Bitcoin. And yeah. the, house, the house at the time was like 20 something million dollars. And they, tr I don't remember what the price was, maybe it was half a million dollars. But they traded at the time, which like in 20, 2016, I think Bitcoin was like $300, $300 at the time. Um, yeah, they traded you can use, uh, you're going to use BitPay, uh, BitPay.com to. Uh, Pretty much buy a house right now. Right now. Right, right. Anybody can buy a house right now with Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you can use crypto, Bit, BitPay to make the, make the exchange, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And BitPay is a super trusted, uh, um, uh, what, what would you call it? A clearinghouse? Clear, no, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of exchange. It? It's kind of an exchange yeah. in a sense. Yeah. It's, it's, um, a, it's a fiat to crypto exchange is what it is. It's not so much a like exchange of cryptos, but... Uh, also, CryptoRealEstate.cc is another one. Uh, there's, a, there's a few sites uh, that you can buy a, a property with, with, with Bitcoin, which is, right. come on, man. People but, are always asking me, it's like, what can you buy with Bitcoin? Why are you investing in Bitcoin? It doesn't make sense. That's just the ma uh, internet money. You can't do anything with it. You're just trying to invest into a pyramid scheme. It's like, no, no, bro. Like, you can literally go out. You know, you can tether your, your, your Bitcoin or your crypto into a visa card if you want into a visa card you know and and make daily purchases with it you know if you if you like tap to pay link up your bitcoin uh, your crypto visa card to your to your tap to pay device and go out there and tap to pay and the your crypto you're literally buying things with your your crypto and people are like no 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 that's 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 not how it works no. like dude that's that's literally legitimately yeah. how what it works we, too, what uh, we probably need to do at some point is actually go out in public using bitpay and show people <laughs> that it actually does physically yeah. work i know you're yeah. not you're not you're stack sats and hodl forever with bitcoin so you're probably not be able to do it with bitcoin but uh um i probably could do it i have some bitcoin i could use but you know satoshis or something you could use it through through a cash app we've talked about this before you know, oh, yep, send yep. send your send your buddy some some satoshis you know even if you're going to do it through what what's it called fountain um fountain. send somebody some yes. some satoshis just because you can i mean satoshis aren't worth a whole lot in fiat right now but at least one one satoshi is worth a fractional penny but i guess what i'm trying to say is that where are you going dude <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i know this is getting used to the avatar sorry everybody we're we're, si we're still set settling in our avatars here um, we may not do this permanently, but it's it's still kind of a concept. We're trying to figure out how to get more interactive. Yeah, there you go, dancing. Yeah, he's dancing on his chair. <laughs> so, um, anyways, when it comes to uh, uh, what BlackRock is doing right now, as I mentioned before, with uh, them trying to set up an ETF, 
is that he's kind of confirming. And it's funny to see a person worth so much money and not be Warren Buffett um, recognize. And I know Elon Musk is the second richest guy in the world. So, of course, he recognizes Bitcoin and, and other altcoins like Doge um, as being valid. But I, I, I have to take Elon Musk's commentary with a grain of salt because he's kind of a weirdo. Um, <laughs> not that I'm not a weirdo, but he's a different kind of weirdo. Um, and, uh, but to see a person who's quote unquote more respected within the, within the uh, traditional finance community, like Larry Fink, uh, comment on Bitcoin as being legit gives people that are more traditional, more of an idea that Bitcoin might actually be legit if this man is interested in doing it. So he's, he likes money. It's pretty clear. And it's just a way for him to, to kind of solidify the fact that crypto could be where they go next. It'd be interesting to see them dump, you know, um, five billion or ten billion dollars of their investment fund into crypto if they haven't already. Yeah. So. So I got. Uh, you can see this article here. BlackRock refiles for Bitcoin ETF after SEC flags flaws. Mm -hmm. That's an, like 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 Jake was saying. That's a really good sign, man, for that spot ETF. They really want it and. Now that they uh, got some oversight from the SSC on what to add or what to correct. Right. It wouldn't surprise me if it actually goes through, and that's what everyone's waiting for right now. So the market's going up, and uh, I would say up and down, right? Like 1% up and down. What, what, what have you been? Have you been watching the market lately? I know it went down a bit. I know my, my one of my wallets, I was keeping like a bunch of right? it did went, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin itself didn't go down much. Actually, my Verge went up 40%. <laughs> I was like, holy um, crap, Verge is... I mean, it still hasn't... Reached, it like altcoin season? It hasn't... Yeah, it's kind of altcoin, but it, it's been random altcoin. Okay, it's like this mm -hmm. altcoin, then that altcoin, then this altcoin, then that altcoin. Bit, you know, Litecoin went way up, and then it fell down a, a little bit, and then... And then, and then uh, Bitcoin Cash... You know, Bitcoin up. Cash skyrocketed, and then it fell back a little yeah. bit, too. And it's like, yeah. what is going on out there? <laughs> you know, somebody's just like, we need to dump into altcoins, because, like, the market went up a lot, even with Bitcoin, but it went up way more with altcoins than it did with Bitcoin. And I think it's because people are just feeling it out, trying, trying to figure out where they can put their money and make a boatload overnight. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Um, but yeah, it's. I'm pretty sure that BlackRock, unless they try like 10 or 12 times and don't get through with the SEC, I think they're really pushing the SEC. It feels like they're trying to bully the SEC when the SEC is bullying everyone else. Um. So we'll see if they can actually pull it off. It'd be yeah, it would be amazing, wouldn't it? There you go. You're testing your mm -hmm. avatar out. Um, yeah. I. It, it feels like the third run is on the horizon, right? Mm -hmm. And the third run, as predicted by the Winklevoss twins, is supposed to make Bitcoin run to over 125,000 US dollars. Nice. So nice. four times is it four times where it is? Yeah, roughly four times where it is right now. And we'll wow. surpass the last run, you know, by double. Because that's what everyone predicted. And they're saying this isn't supposed to happen until late 2024, early 2025. I'm mm -hmm. fine if it takes that long, but as long as it's a long ramp. Because we already know that Bitcoin can fall overnight. <laughs> but, um, yeah, if I, it, it's, it would be very interesting to see how much of a bull run hits if... BlackRock does actually get its its uh, spot ETF. If it does, I mean, do you want to call it now? Do you want to see? Do you want to see if we can call the, the price it'll hit after the uh, Ooh, spot um, hits? If it does hit, if it does hit, I feel like um in the in the short term, thirty five k. Not much of a movement, not yet. Not okay. until the having, which is coming up in like eight months. Really? After the having, so the having, the Bitcoin having is in April mm -hmm. of next year. Right. Right. That's I would consider that like right around the corner, and I think that's what a lot of people are waiting for the real boom to go up. Hmm. This particular having, I don't know if you if you noticed. I'm sure you noticed. We've been doing this pretty much every single day, yeah. and <laughs> we, we've noticed that there hasn't been really a big boom like a real bull market you know like the 2017 uh, bull market right a lot of people uh, a lot of people are waiting for that uh but i i feel like the next having 
will be that. And of course, I'll keep saying that until it actually happens. <laughs> Every single having. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but that was uh, right. So the it's a technical analysis that people are using right now and have been since the last boom, and they're just mm-hmm. they're just drawing a straight line, a, a cur- well, a straight line. It's it's a vertical line from the first boom to the tip of the second boom to the predicted tip of the third boom. And that's the reason they've been, the people have said it's going to be about 125,000. Um, and it could be more than that. Right? No way of knowing until we get to that point. But I mean, hell, we didn't even, we didn't, nobody, nobody could have explicitly predicted the first two. So, yeah, 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 um, yeah, exactly. That's so why I, I'm like just lowballing it. 35K, even though it doesn't sound like much, I, I still don't. Honestly, think I mean, I've obviously been very wrong before, um, and uh, I, I'm fine with admitting to that. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think that if if the Bitcoin spot ETF gets awarded to BlackRock being the largest trader, I can easily see sixty five, seventy thousand within really? wow. a month here? or two. Really? I don't wow. think it will happen all at once, but I think, I mean, there will be a massive investment right off the bat because people will be like, oh my gosh, we can get in now. But then everybody else will still pile in. You'll, you'll get all the other ETFs, assuming they, well, everybody yeah. who I failed mean, the, in the okay, past. So, yeah, so if the, uh, if the other ETFs, uh, r- uh, sorry, if the other companies that are filing for its body ETFs right on the back of, uh, uh, of, of BlackRock, if they also all go through, oh yeah, dude, we're 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 hitting 100k, man. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, like you, all these companies, because that's a lot of money that's gonna be flowing in. So if BlackRock can can perfect whatever the SEC is requesting, mm-hmm. all they have to do is just copy and paste all these right. other companies that just right. have to copy and everybody and paste. else. And once we get a lot more ETFs on board, then everybody else will just be okay. Well, this is where all the money was rolling in, but it's it's it's. I mean, you no, know, it's been it's been years. A lot of people in the United States companies, you know, uh, uh, conglomerates have been requesting a spot ETF for right. years, and right. they just could never get it, yeah. never get it. Yeah. And now we're like we're right there. You can pretty much, you can. It's so close. It. Yeah, it's, it's, it's right so there, so close. And once it, once the floodgates break, that's where I say I f- feel like it's gonna not quite make it to the previous high. Like it will. I mean, we've seen this happen before. I mean, if something big happens, but it doesn't break as high as the previous uh, peak, and the previous peak isn't really even a something from an investor standpoint you should even be looking at. Yes, it might hit 125 within a year and a half to two years, but no one, in my opinion, should be looking at the next peak because the next peak is where it drops off. It goes up and then it goes right back down again. If you're going to be in it, you should be selling. Before it starts tapering. So it's like, mm-hmm. as soon as it keeps, if it climbs a steep, steep, steep climb, and then at some point it stops, sell. If you're going to sell at all. Because know, it's... Man. For, for the past couple of years, I've just been stacking sats, like, like, I, like I told you. Like I tell everybody, and, I, and a lot of people, you know, over at Hacker Dojo, they ask me, hey, uh, Blockchain John, what do you, what exactly do you do with crypto, man? What do you do with your crypto? It's like, bro, I, I am the, probably the most, uh, you know, a monotone and, and mundane kind of kind of guy in crypto because yeah, you're like a Michael I, I Saylor. Literally just don't, I just I just buy and I hold it. I don't right. do anything else with it. You know, like what do you want me to give? You want me to give you this whole like elaborate like uh, 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 um, techniques that I'm doing with crypto? No, no, dude. I just I buy it. I hold it in my wallet, and that's it, man. Right. So when the day that it does boom, I can do I can do the dance. <laughs> you know? I can, yeah. Uh. I need to learn how to make my character laugh so it doesn't look like he's so stoned or so dead. I mean, yeah, I can make him shake his head and I can make him move and you guys make it look like he's... But he's, his mouth isn't even moving. No, anyways, this is just a trial to figure out what we're going to do next. So I was trying to figure out some way of coming up with a good avatar experience that we knew about because when Braveland went away, we couldn't use that anymore. And um, I certainly don't want to use Facebook's metaverse. Um so what could we use that would be legit, sort of legit looking? And this is, yeah, and this, this is what I remember. Been improved. Yeah, this has got a lot better. A lot. So yeah, it's um, still, it's not the best, but uh, there's still some some improvement that needs to be yeah. done. But and if people are wondering why better. why we're doing this, it's because John and I are in separate places, and I don't like to be on camera. I, I don't mind admitting that my 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 character. 
I've never, my previous channel, I was never on camera. Nobody seemed to give a boo, you know, give a hoot about that. So I just, I'm just maintaining that, that look. And I'm just going, this is not even close to what I actually look like in real life. So this is just the randomized character I created for this, this test trial run that we're doing with, with this uh, different format we're running with. So we hope you guys are cool with it. But actually, the neat thing is you can probably actually can't see it in the, the cameraman's perspective, but there's a huge audience sitting out here. I don't know if I can zoom him out real quick so you guys can see it. Let's see if we can do that real quick. Yeah, there we go. There's this huge audience space that anybody can come in and, and sit with us and, and, and listen to our podcast. So I think it would be kind of neat if we could do that, if we could get people uh, in the audience. So yeah, we I just think be looking at a camera. <laughs> You know what's cool is I, I think we can actually mute people in the audience. Yep. So it's just us talking, so we can invite people to come in. Yeah. The only thing we can't do is make sure they don't up. they don't stand on the stage. Remember how Braveland did that? Braveland could keep oh, people yeah, off yeah. the stage. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that was the one control I wish we had because you could say like when we want someone to come on stage, we could just select them and that allow them to come on stage. But the other thing is, in this room, you could totally walk behind the the screen. A person could walk mm -hmm. behind the screen. They could walk through the screen. They could walk you know, right through our table. Because there's clipping, so I don't know. It, it's it's not a terrible setup. I do I do kind of like this setup. Um, it's a it's a neat looking room. The room is actually very pleasant. It kind of looks like Arizona out there. Um, and uh, you know, John's made all these coffee cups, which unfortunately I can't touch, nor can I drink. <laughs> but, coffee, uh, coffee. Yeah. It would be nice. It would be nice if you could just like you could smoke and you could drink and you could have a microphone. We just need to have a lot of functionality. But I'm sure that's that's too realistic. Anyways, um, not to get too far off the topic, but I just wanted to try to get you know break the ice and the fourth wall at the same time. So uh, I hope we can use this in the future. If not, we'll find something better. But uh, there are other functions, and we encourage you guys. You can totally download, get into. Um, Actually, that's no, there's no download required issue. You can use a... No, a um, just uh, browser-based. Yeah, you can use a virtual interface of a VR headset if you want to uh, join in this interface, or you can just use a browser, and it's free. Just you know, sign up however you want to sign up, and you can uh, join us in the audience. And that would be great. I mean, not that, not that Twitch is bad. Obviously, a lot of people like like uh, watching on Twitch. You don't want to necessarily have to control an avatar just to be able to participate. Um, you might well just be able to come. There's, where's the comment section, guys, right? <laughs> if you guys do join us, make sure make sure you guys give me the dance, all right? right. We need the dance, bro. <laughs> we need the dance. Eh. So, anyways. Um, yeah, it, I think this is a good start. I'm glad that we could... Um, I still feel like, like I'm a little bit nervous about what's going on just because I'm still not used to the interface. Um, still, still got to figure out how to move our characters so we don't look like we're jerking about all over the place <laughs> John's doing that right now <laughs> um, it's kind of weird it would be nice if you could give a thumbs up without having your character stand that'd be nice wouldn't it <laughs> um, actually I think can you do a thumbs up yeah see you oh, stood yeah. up this is just dumb why would you... can't you just thumbs up without standing which is, which, which is weird because uh, if I do this yeah, the laugh. It just shows a bunch of laughs over your head. It's yeah. so dumb. Uh, all right, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Clapping. Anyways. All right, so um, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I don't really have any more uh, news at the moment. We just wanted to talk about BlackRock and uh, how things were going with that. Uh, this is more the the politics and business episode. Wednesdays will be politics and, uh, politics and business and uh, what other uh, topics we want to talk about regarding that explicitly it doesn't have to be the stuff that's on the screen behind us but um and then on sunday nights we're going to start doing gaming news hopefully <laughs> we're going to work out the bugs and uh get you some better content and better you know visualizations and maybe we'll pay for this account i don't even know yet um so this is kind of be kind of like what the new format's going to be you know visual behind us and uh, avatars in front of us, likely, unless we can get someone else working. So I, would, I, would, I really would like to have an avatar where you can actually see the mouth talking or the mouth moving, not just uh, a... Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. <laughs> what are Whoops. you doing there, John? I don't know what I did. Yeah, you moved the screen in I front of us. Move the screen back. <laughs> You're blocking the screen. Oh, man. Oh, well. All right. Well, we're going <laughs> to end this anyway. So 
That's uh, that's the first uh, first attempt to hear at episode 530 on Wednesday, <laughs> July 5th. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're going to be you know plugging things, and you can check us our our coin tree when you like. So next time, uh, stack. And until next time, stack sats and stack hodl. Stack sats and hodl. Uh, uh, adios. adios.